Just say that throughout the whole thing. Uh, my name's Nate. Uh, it might be hard to understand me at some time. I'm from uh, New York City. New York City! I'm just kidding, I'm from Nashville. I wear this shirt for a, a couple of reasons. So if I get questions like that, they just, they're like, oh, oh Nashville, okay. <laughs> if people come in late, they know. They don't have to interrupt us by asking. They'll just read my shirt. If they can't figure that out, then they're probably from Nashville too. <laughs> they probably had the same shirt. Uh, I also wear it in case I get lost. People know where to send me. It's kind of like a dog leash. I got my name and number written in the back. So you can always find me if you see me laying on the street. Just send me back to Nashville. I'll be good. Uh, one thing I noticed since living here in Chicago is uh, the directions that you get from so many people. Uh, Y'all use the compass a lot here, as I understand. <laughs> First time I moved up here, I'm like, you know, how do you go to the store? They're like, go north uh, five blocks, then go south three. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm somewhere in the middle, I don't know which way is north or south or east or do I left or right or straight or... I didn't bring my compass today. Uh, and it's so confusing because the one thing they taught me was like, just remember, the lake's always east. I can't always see the lake. <laughs> How do you know? And people... People will ask me, because you know, you see someone, this is the other reason I wear this shirt, because don't ask me for directions. <laughs> but people will ask me, they'll be like, hey, I need to, uh, you know, get here. And I, I'm like, ah, the lake's east. <laughs> Easy throws them off and they just leave. Me and I keep going wandering around the city with my compass. Another thing here is, uh, my only phone here is a cell phone. Uh, cell phones are, are about ridiculous. The signal on a cell phone, I, does it ever work? Because there's really never, if I, the one time I get a full signal, if you do this, you're done. You're out. Your signal's gone. You have nothing else left. I got quite a few places that Verizon guy can go and he ain't going to be able to hear when he says, can you hear me now? Like my house. Come to my house. Come outside my house. Walk down the street. I can be standing in the middle of the ditch, and I'm sure I would still be like, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? And I hope I never get hurt and have to call 911, because I'm screwed. Or if someone breaks in my house, and I have to climb under my bed, I'm like, hey, there's a guy in my house. And they're like, sir, are you there? And i got to kind of scoot over. There's a guy in my house there's a guy until I have to crawl out and I just get killed then I'm bleeding having to roll around with a knife in my back I need an ambulance what I need an ambulance if you don't mind please the uh, I, I, I don't know if this has to do with that but what's the age where you're not scared of the dark I don't know if I've hit it yet. <laughs> this is why I'm standing in this little circle right here. If I go outside of it, I'm screwed. I'll never make it back. This is the only thing that I figured out. The age and uh, the point to where you do it, or how you stop being uh, scared of the dark is you get married. And that's so you can have someone share your bed with you. So the monster now has got to decide between one of you. <laughs> you might have a chance. And then the reason you have kids is so you pass them along to him and then he leaves you alone the rest of the day. And then you're okay. And the thing about, you know, when you were a kid, it was, you were so scared of the dark and you just hated it. Unless there was one other kid in there. Then if you had a friend over, then it's two eight-year-old kids in the bed and you're like, you know, I'm feeling okay. Like the monsters down there going, Fred, uh, Johnny's got someone to spend the night tonight. I don't know if I'd go up there. 
That's two eight-year-old kids you gotta mess with. It's probably not a good idea. Heard his parents are divorced though, so let's go after his dad. Uh, a game you used to play also when you're a kid is a uh, hide and seek, hide and go seek. I think that is a very very fun game. I don't think it gets taken seriously enough though. Maybe when you were 10, uh, when you would break your ankle to hide in the dryer so nobody could find you. And you know, when you'd get those good spots where uh, you'd be there for a good hour or so. And then you're like, no, I don't know if this is either a great, and you don't want to leave. Because it's a great spot. What if he sees you leaving? You can never go back. That's such a, the dryer. Who thinks of the dryer? I thought of the dryer. I'm a genius. So you go, then you gotta go up there and he's already quit. He quit two hours ago. He's like, I couldn't find him. I looked for a little bit. The uh, Easter was just recently, and speaking of hiding, uh, they had an Easter egg hunt. And, uh, you know, they had, now they, the thing is now is when they hide the Easter egg, they, they just throw them out on the grass. It's not even, it's not game is. Because I guess they want everybody to find an egg, you know, make everybody happy. And that's not how I did it. My dad would hide them on the road. You'd be mowing the grass in August and run over an egg. And be like, there it is. I found it. You'd climb trees, fall down and break the leg, get up, and you still had it. And then you'd open it and it was the money egg. And it was worth everything. With five dollars in it. And that's all you needed. Holidays are great too. Uh, I remember the first time I met the Easter Bunny. He, uh, <laughs> uh, he pulled up in uh, my dad's car with his seatbelt on. My dad picked him up, I guess. He was about six five. I was wondering. I was like, that's a tall Easter Bunny. It's not what you think. I don't see how he snuck in my house. Uh, Santa Claus also is someone that You're like, I don't remember asking Santa for socks. Where did he get that idea? Socks and a toothbrush. He's wasting two good presents on socks and a toothbrush. Did my mom talk to him when I left? Because I don't, I don't remember saying that. And then you know, then you gotta go through the opening the presents and everything, and that's an awkward moment when you gotta open presents. You don't know the reaction you're supposed to give, especially like, go ahead and open now. We're we gonna watch you. And then you gotta open it, whether you like. I mean, are you supposed to jump up and just Woo! and just start running around the room? I can't believe you got this. This is unbelievable. You're so happy. You're just there's no any not any good reaction. If it is a terrible present, you're like, yeah, all right, thank you. And if uh, that joke went well, didn't it? Should probably work on that one. Uh, I got another. The, the, another little story is uh, my family, they used to give, my mom's side of the family would give everybody the same present. That was just, you, everybody would get the exact same present. And my dad was actually telling me this story because he was uh, before I was born. And he said uh, that he gave, we have uh, two people in our family and they're deaf. Well, this is the year when smoke alarms came out. So they got two smoke alarms. Two deaf people got two smoke alarms. They didn't think about that, you know? It's not a braille smoke alarm either, where you walk by. It, it beeps real loud. So, and, and their house burnt down a couple of days later. I guess they didn't get the batteries in there right or something. Well, that is my time, and I'm Nate. Thank you.